Wow, Kite Man, you're looking fashionable. How much did all that tasteless clothing set you back? Um, about $2,000. Clothing is one of the primary ways humans express themselves visually. The clothes you choose to drape over your disgusting, lumpy, sweaty bodies says a lot about you. Naturally, fashion branding, celebrities, and pop culture dictate what is viewed as trendy or valuable. And there isn't really a brand that represents the antithesis of that idea more than Supreme. Supreme started off as a one-off store based in downtown Manhattan, primarily designed to appeal to the skateboarding, hip-hop, and other youth culture crowds of the early 90s. Fast forward to now, and Supreme makes hundreds of millions of dollars in profits, and their products are more desirable than ever. Their entire business model is built around artificial scarcity, a tactic companies like Nintendo have employed in the past to drive sales by making their products appear to be more limited, fashionable, and scarce than perhaps they actually are or could be. James Jabir, founder of Supreme, has been quoted as saying that their short runs of clothing are simply because they don't want to get stuck with stuff nobody wants, which is obvious tosh you'd have to be a fool to believe. It's all about perception. As soon as someone hears that there are only a hampered number of a said product available, then it immediately becomes more alluring to cash in your chance at joining the exclusive club. If you go to the Supreme website outside of a sales period, you'll notice that nothing is actually available for purchase until their arbitrary new collection begins, again reinforcing how exclusive and out of the ordinary their clothing is, only encouraging the mad rush of buyers desperate to get any product they can with the logo printed on it, with some complete maniacs even camping outside a week before, or even paying stupid amounts for bots who can quickly place an order for you. Right as the store opens a new wave of clothing, just have a chance at snagging a new ugly jacket or shirt. Honestly, in terms of running a business, it's a very effective way to drive sales, and none of really what I've said I have a problem with. If there are people willing to buy, then by all means, sell your absurdly expensive products. Everything about Supreme is bold and over the top. It's gaudy, simple, with harsh contrasting colours that are mostly very show-offy, fully embracing the purposeful lack of subtlety of the 90s all the way down to that ridiculous price tag. A price tag that is high enough when first released, but often highly inflated by the scalpers and sellers who are able to get away with magnifying their worth because of how scarce they are compared to the demand. I'd say in my opinion about 5-10% to of Supreme products look just fine. I'd never purchase or wear any of it myself, but if you're genuinely into the products for how they look, and you're okay with wasting what could otherwise be money to live off for months, then go for it. But dear god, this company has me questioning if their entire existence isn't some kind of sick social experiment to see how far they can take the piss with what they can get away with selling. Let me explain. There was some debate over whether the famous Supreme Box logo is drawn from the iconic style of the 1979 propaganda piece of conceptual art by Barbara Kruger named I shop, therefore I am. An obvious and blatant critique of consumerism, which amusingly would probably sell for hundreds of dollars on the official Supreme website if printed on a Supreme t-shirt. You only have to see the two side by side to see that it's a complete and total rip-off of the artwork. Even the owner of Supreme himself did wind up admitting to basically stealing the design, but the irony certainly isn't lost on that one. Supreme is almost worth existing for how hilarious this is alone. It's almost a parody of itself. Kruger, the original artist, eventually ignored acknowledge the fellas at Supreme by describing them as a clusterfuck of totally uncool jokers, basically doing my job for me. So with this idea in mind, let's take a look at some of the laughably on-the-nose products that Supreme have peddled in the past, and people have flocked to pay for, like a bunch of fucking seagulls. Most infamous in my mind is the money gun, capable of quite literally shooting notes of money as if it were as meaningless as confetti. Originally selling for about $88, but now going for hundreds on eBay for some reason. Or how about the Supreme brick, an ordinary clay brick with the logo printed on it, which also sells for hundreds upon hundreds of dollars in the second-hand market. You can't make this up, th there's not a more foolish accessory. Oh wait, hang on, there are, there are plenty more. Right, so I'm gonna put three Supreme products on the screen, and one of them is fake and photoshopped. Try to guess which one. So we've got these embarrassing Supreme nunchucks, this utterly pointless Supreme crowbar, all these random Supreme bolt cutters. So take a note of which you think is fake. 
And... Okay, I, I was lying. They're all real. Hey, and for only half a grand off eBay, you can make your dog a hype beast too. With a supreme dog bowl. The stupid accessories never end. I swear these are all real. Go and look them up yourself. Okay, so let's leave the accessories behind for a minute. And talk about the actual clothing. The real allure of the brand. Probably the most repulsive clothing I've ever seen from them. Is the HR Geiger set of hoodies and shirts. Now I think HR Geiger, who you probably know as the concept artist behind Alien, was an amazing artist artist, but I would never want to wear what Supreme did with his classic pieces of art. These revolting items are about as tasteful as those wolf howling shirts you'd find for a fiver in your local town in the Friday morning high street sale. Oh, but hang on, it says Supreme on it. I'll chuck a few zeros on the end then. That's more like it. Stop. These Supreme Nike Air Moors are a good meme. With the text garishly plastered over the shoe, the Supreme logo looks like it's about to burst out of the fabric, like a bunch of boils that are ready to explode. All you have to do is take a quick look at the website to see how bad some of these designs are. Obviously beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that, but come on. Come on. There's something about the way the official website displays the products that's so cocky to me. Yeah, look at us. We're so ultimate that we named our company Supreme. We are literally supreme. We could kidnap your own mother and sell her back to you for 600 bucks, as long as we slap the logo on her forehead, and you'd pay for it. Supreme aren't a revolutionary company. All of the things I've mentioned in this video has been proven to be tried and tested to make money for countless years. Brands that people perceive as quality or antique can naturally use their hungry audience for money monetary gain. I just worry more for Supreme fans' wallets more than anything else. You poor things. I mean, as long as you're happy with blowing your cash to become a living billboard for a multi-million dollar company that is so unoriginal that they stole their own logo, then go for it. But to me, it seems as though people aren't even particularly interested in the clothing or accessories in and of themselves, but are more into the idea of it, what it represents. The exclusivity. Taking pleasure in the fact that them purchasing one of their overpriced products means that that's one less available for another person to own. If you think that collecting supreme accessories or clothing is somehow more legitimate or cool than collecting comic books or other dorky things, it really isn't. It's just a different form of the same obsession. You may justify it in your head by thinking that Supreme somehow makes you unique or special because of how limited it is, but just ask yourself if what you're dropping hundreds for is actually unique because it's so impressive, stylish, and rare, or because a billion dollar corporation told you that it was. Subscribe for more videos, and make sure you leave a comment about why I'm wrong that I won't read. Bye.